What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Wow, I know, who'd have thought it? A midweek Shark Bites episode this early on in season six. You lucky people. So the reason that I'm popping up into your subscription feeds again is because I wanted to get this video out relatively quickly. It's fairly time sensitive with the news, so the video might be a little bit shorter than what you're used to, but it should be a good one. Really quickly though, some of you will undoubtedly be asking why I am wearing my glasses in this Shark Bites episode. Well, a few weeks ago, a very young Shark Bites super fan called Josie came up to me at the football. Now, Josie wears glasses and she sees me wearing my glasses at the football all the time because I'm short-sighted and if I didn't wear them, I just wouldn't be able to see the Ball. But she said to me that she never sees me wearing my glasses on Shark Bite shows and she wanted me to wear them to show everyone there is nothing uncool about wearing glasses. And she's absolutely right. So here you are, Josie. Today's episode and my swanky specs are dedicated to you. Right, a few weeks back, I'm sure there was loads of you that were inundated with news stories about a very rare shark that washed up on a beach here in the UK. Well, we've only gone and found another one, this time in Ireland, and that's really not that far from where the first stranding took place. And this time, the shark that they found is a lot bigger. First up though, we're gonna run through exactly what happened a few weeks ago. Back in March, Alicia Openshaw spotted a six foot shark thrashing around in the shallows on her local beach in Hampshire. The beach in question is Lepe Beach, which is not too far from Southampton on the south coast of England. When she saw the shark in distress, the first thing that Alicia decided to do was to get in the water and help it out. Alicia, it is a shark, so be careful. Mommy, please be careful. This is pretty badass behavior, by the way. There's not a lot of people that would do that. Personally, I would always contact the local relevant stranding authority because this situation can be particularly dangerous for humans and also for the shark. But I get that these things are very time sensitive, so I'm not gonna berate someone for, at the very least, trying to help. Anyway, she managed to get a brief video of her trying to push that shark out to deeper water. Although sadly, a few hours later, that very same shark ended up back on the beach, stranded and subsequently died. It was at this point, some pictures started circling circling around on social media and it perked the interest of a fair few shark scientists and shark enthusiasts, including myself. I was looking at the pictures and the video of the shark and reading comments on Twitter and Facebook from people saying that it was a poor beagle shark or it was a mako shark, but looking at it, I was like, it's neither of those two sharks. I think having seen the video and spotting that unusual upper caudal lobe on the tail region of the shark, that I thought it might be a small tooth sand tiger shark. And it was at this point, a fair few of the shark scientists started to agree that they all thought it was a small tooth sand tiger shark, which would be incredibly rare for our waters. Although it's really, really difficult to categorically prove that from a picture and a blurry video. You need scientists to be able to have a real close up look at that body, the head, the teeth, the tail to get a positive ID. So a few scientists from ZSL which is the Zoological Society of London, popped up and said they were gonna try and come down the following day and have a look to see if they could ID that shark. But by the time they arrived the next day, some trophy hunters under the cover of darkness had decided to chop off the head and the tail. It's so frustrating when this happens because it just makes life harder for the scientists trying to accurately identify that species. I should point out that it's not illegal for people to do this to fish that have stranded on UK beaches. So no laws were broken, but it was just a dick move. The ZSL scientists did eventually arrive and got what samples they could from that shark. I don't know for sure, but I imagine they did some genetic analysis back at the lab that can point you in the right direction for an accurate species ID. A few days after, they did manage to confirm it as being a small tooth sand tiger shark, which is a first for UK waters. Small tooth sand tiger sharks are a deep sea species of shark that are patchily distributed across the world in tropical or warm temperate oceans. They tend to feed on bottom dwelling critters like invertebrates or small fishes and don't really pose a threat to humans. Now, there have been records of small tooth sand tiger sharks in the Mediterranean and around the Bay of Biscay. So it's not really that far for them to swim to British waters, but as of the scientific records, they hadn't done until now. I know that just because we didn't have any records of them doesn't mean that they weren't here, but it's pretty cool to now have this definitively proved. It's interesting here that we've got a shark species that has been documented in the Bay of Biscay and has now rocked up in UK waters because it's somewhat relevant to that great white shark that was caught in the Bay of Biscay back in the 1970s. And it shows you that sharks from that area can quite easily swim into British waters. Make sure you go and check out that video that we did on great white sharks in British waters. By the way, guys, you can click that link there and give it a watch. Anyway, because we have this record now, it's probably going to lead to a range extension for the species, which is great to see. Because it's another shark species that we can add to our list of awesome sharks that we get here in the UK. But when something like this happens, you tend to think, well, how much of an anomaly was this incident? If this shark has never been documented in our waters before,
for? Was it just really lost or was it sick? And did that sickness maybe contribute to us finding it here? It's kind of like that Greenland shark that washed up in the UK not that long ago. Well, if we thought it was a rare occurrence, then how wrong we were because it's only gone and happened again. We've got a phrase here in England about buses where we say you wait ages and ages for one to turn up and then two come along at the same time. And it looks like this might have happened here with these small tooth sand tiger sharks because another one has washed up in Ireland about two days ago, which is crazy. This time the shark washed up at Kilmore Quay in the southeast of Ireland and my God, was she a big one. <laughs> Nicholas Payne, a lecturer at Trinity College, got to the stranding as soon as he could, probably knowing what happened last time with the decapitation of that first shark. And after taking some samples and measurements, the female shark came in at a total length of 4.3 meters. That's 14 feet over twice the length of the first shark that was found. Nick does believe that the shark in these photographs here is a small tooth sand tiger shark, and I'm definitely inclined to agree with him. But that length of 4.3 meters there, I think is actually longer than the maximum length listed for this species, which is crazy. But the question remains, why did both of these sharks strand? And as of the time that I'm recording this video, unfortunately, I haven't got any definitive answers for you yet. Scientists will of course analyze the samples that they've got from both of these sharks over the coming weeks to try and find out exactly what's gone on here. I know for a fact that some ecotoxicology analysis is going to be done to find out if the shark succumbed to some form of pollution. Now, correlation doesn't equal causation here, so we've got to be very careful about jumping to conclusions on this one. Two strandings of the same shark species within the space of about three weeks could simply be coincidence. But at the same time, it could also reveal that something a little bit strange is going on in the deep sea at the moment. Disease and illness can spread from shark to shark, especially in a species like this one, which is occasionally known to aggregate at depth in small groups of around five to six individuals. Meningitis in sharks does happen, and it's interesting to think whether that might have caused these sharks to get sick and strand. Someone has also pointed out in a Twitter thread surrounding this topic that a few offshore wind farm sites are being assessed not too far from where this second shark stranded. And when offshore wind farm sites are being assessed, it can be a pretty noisy affair, and noise pollution is definitely enough to cause serious distress to a marine animal, which could result in it stranding. I'm really hesitant to jump to any conclusions on this one because without doing the analysis myself, it's impossible for me to know for sure. I do think it's one to keep an eye on though, and if I do hear anything more, I'll make sure to post it in the comments and pin it to the top so all of you can read it. As a little side note though, if you want to learn more about why sharks strand and learn a little bit about why that Greenland shark stranded in the UK, then stick around to the end screen and you can watch a video that we did here on Shark Bites all about it. But for now, I want to know what you all think about this one. Why do you reckon these two sharks stranded? Is there something going on in the deep sea? Have you ever heard of a small tooth sand tiger shark before? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button and also turn that notifications bell on and that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.